Welcome back, this is Student Q&A. In this video I will answer this question sent to me by Mohamed. Thank you Mohamed for sending this question, it's a really good one. Uh, so Mohamed wanted to know how to do grounded theory research in NVivo and specifically about uh, coding and grounded theory. So uh, to answer this question I will need to talk about these uh, three things. First, I'll explain what grounded theory is and how it's relevant to NVivo. Uh, then I'll talk about benefits of line-by-line -line coding, which is probably one of the most recognized uh, characteristics of grounded theory. So I'll uh, talk about the benefits, uh, how applying line-by-line -line coding may benefit your research and your findings. And then finally, I will explain how to do line-by-line -line coding in NVivo. First of all, what is grounded theory and how is it relevant to NVivo? Uh, grounded theory is a research methodology or a research approach. And to really understand all the details of it, I highly recommend this book that you can see on your screens now. Uh, because of course, as a research methodology, it has many, many characteristics. However, I will focus on these two because I believe that not only are they central to grounded theory, but also, both of these characteristics are very relevant to NVivo. So the first one is that you don't adopt any pre-existing frameworks in, in grounded theory. So uh, when you investigate your data, you don't want to impose any existing framework on this data. You're not looking to uh, confirm a theory or you're not looking to decline or reject a theory. So in other words, you don't want to use any pre-existing thematic or theoretical framework. Instead, what you really want to do is to explore a relatively under-researched or uh, unknown phenomenon and understand this phenomenon and provide explanation or a theory from your data. This means that you really want to focus on this data. You don't want any other frameworks to bother you and you want to develop this explanation, this coding, this theoretical framework. This is the reason why you really don't want to even have any existing frameworks in mind when approaching the data, because you don't want to be biased. You just want all the understanding of this phenomenon that you're investigating to emerge from your data. And the second characteristic, and it links to the first one, because you don't want this to happen, because you don't want uh, any other frameworks to be imposed on your data and you want to start really start from scratch, uh, detailed coding is essential. Usually, not always, but usually line-by-line -line coding is applied in grounded theory research. Uh, so it's a very detailed coding. It's pretty much every code is pretty much a summary of each line at the beginning of your study, because later on you will start to uh, minimize the number of these codes. But when you start, because you really don't want to miss anything, uh, you usually apply line-by-line -line coding. Here, for example, you can see a coding framework that I developed in my study of Polish migrants' English language identity. This, uh, this framework consists of line-by-line uh, -line codes and it was only based on the first three or four interviews. There are 171 codes, so that's quite a lot. But this is because they were line-by-line -line codes. And eventually, I started to organize them as I saw that I can't really, I'm not developing any new codes, and I'm starting to use the same codes to describe the data. This was a sign uh, to me that I can start organizing, inspecting these codes first, and then organizing them into uh, groups and merging them into more inclusive codes and so on and so on. So this is just the beginning. You don't have to do it throughout the whole data. But why would you even want to do this line by line coding? It's obviously very time consuming. So you may wonder what the point is of doing that. So here I will show you an example again from my PhD thesis. Uh, this is an example of how I was coding, and this is a comparison of line-by-line -line codes and more inclusive and broader codes. So here you can see this extract. Initially, I coded it as being different in Polish and English. This was the name of the code, and this is something I was 
looking at and something I was looking for as well in my data. So this person was talking about differences between uh, communicating in English and Polish. So it may appear like a good code actually, because this is what she was talking about. But as I'll show you, if I uh, kept this code, if I didn't try to do line by line coding, there is a number of other themes that I would have missed. So here you can see the same extract, but uh, with my attempt uh, of uh, line by line coding. So here there are many more codes. So for example, being different when communicating in Polish and English, which is quite similar to that initial uh, code that I discussed. But here you have being able to express oneself better in Polish. Here you have beliefs about other people's perceptions, which is something that I didn't really focus on in the case of that uh, first code. Here you have differences in being perceived by Polish people and Scottish people. So you can see again that it is the same extract, but here initially it was coded being different in Polish and English. And here I have potentially four or five codes. And in fact, uh, this code, for example, beliefs about uh, other people's perceptions, eventually this uh, turned out to be one of the major themes in my study and one of the core elements of my thematic framework and of my explanation and my theory of English language identity. So uh, had I not tried to do this line by line coding, I would have missed uh, this important code because this would have simply been coded as uh, being different in Polish and English. So this uh, demonstrates the importance of doing this line by line coding and it also links to this idea that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the idea of grounded theory research, that you don't want any previous knowledge or previous frameworks to be imposed on your data, but rather you want to uh, discover everything from the data itself. And this shows why line by line coding helps to achieve this aim, because otherwise you may miss important things. Initially, these little codes, these uh, little summaries of each line may uh, not look like important elements of your study, but once, for example, you notice that beliefs about other people's perceptions that I coded here start to appear in another line and another line, and, and then in another interview, then you begin to understand that maybe this is an important uh, code to consider. So again, if I hadn't uh, tried to code this in such detail, I wouldn't have uh, been able to even realize that this may be something important. I would have missed this important element of my study. Finally, to answer Mohammed's question, how to do grounded theory research or how to do line by line coding in NVivo, the short answer is there is nothing new about doing a grounded theory study in NVivo as compared to doing any other uh, kind of study in NVivo. Because simply what you will be doing is applying a more detailed coding framework to your data. So uh, with regard to the codes, there will be nothing new. As I said, later on you will start to merge these codes into more inclusive and more abstract codes. Uh, but again, the options that you need for that are still the options that I discussed in this course. So there is nothing unique about doing grounded theory study in NVivo. The only problem is if you have NVivo 10 rather than 11 or 12, because in NVivo 10, this is what the coding looks like. So here, even though these codes were applied to each line like this, here, when you look at this, a uh, coding framework, you can't really tell which code refers to which line, which is a problem. And of course, uh, this makes this whole line by line coding uh, quite pointless because you don't know which line has been coded with uh, which code. Uh, in NVivo 11, this is much easier. I believe it is, is the same in NVivo 12. As you can see here, I applied uh, corresponding codes to each line. So you have line one, line two. This is how I coded these lines. And you can see that it is relatively clear. So you can actually 
tell which line uh, is described by which code. So it's not a problem. Uh, if you're using NVivo 10 or if you're using NVivo 11, but like me, you still don't think this is enough and you'd rather have a clear horizontal code next to each line. If you have a look at this article that I posted on my website, I explain in detail how I used uh, Microsoft Word tables to do this, uh, overcome this problem. So uh, to have these codes uh, written horizontally and then uh, to import this stuff in NVivo. I can tell you now that it's quite time consuming, so you may not uh, be willing to do it because of course these codes that you create in Microsoft Words are not recognized as codes in NVivo. So these are more like guidelines for you, but then eventually you have to take each line and code it with these codes. So this is just uh, as a way of support so that you can see, constantly see these uh, codes that correspond to each line. As I said, have a look at that article if you want to explore uh, this strategy or feel free to ask me questions. So now uh, to summarize, uh, grounded theory research in NVivo is quite simple to apply, meaning that you will still be using the same options, you will still be doing coding. So uh, overall, of course, grounded theory has a lot of different characteristics and it will depend on how you want to conduct your study. But when we specifically focus on NVivo, as I said, there is uh, nothing new about doing grounded theory study here.